Greetings from God who insists we are holy now, here, and everywhere we go, forever. The last of our holiness theme lands on prayer and holiness and focuses on Jesus' big prayer in John 16. It's a majestic prayer full of a gentle sort of eagerness that Jesus exhibits as he talks to God. There are two themes that run throughout this prayer, both of which I'd like to explore and open up as a way of beginning conversation that will continue throughout this lesson. The first one is the emphasis on being separate from the world. The prayer itself is on behalf of those who Jesus has chosen, folks who are not of the world but live within it. This is specified when Jesus says, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. There is a sort of both and going on here that I think is incredibly important. The first theme was separation, but the second theme is belonging, and the separation and belonging take place at the same time. They're almost more connected than not. Not only are we set aside from the world, but asked to participate within it so that everyone will know God through us, more specifically, in my opinion, through our love. The separation and belonging together make God's transformative love a possibility. At the end of the passage, Jesus asks God to sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Here Jesus asks, maybe even begs God, to set us aside and declare us holy, which is what to sanctify means, to declare holy the truth. In another class of my undergraduate degree, I wrote an essay on Mennonite author Miriam Taves, and it explored the connection of truth and love. We talked about Jesus being love or God being love. We talk about that a lot. There's a whole German hymn that I know from my childhood titled Gott ist die Liebe, literally, God is love. This notion has probably been the most steadfast thread through my growing up and my growing in to faith. What, with that reminder, it seems logical to understand that truth, God's truth, even God's word, is love. Closing that circle and coming back to the beginning, how do we link this all to prayer? What does prayer look like if we keep the knowledge that we are set aside, but also within the world and made holy to love one another? What does prayer look like in that context? Krista Tippett, who is a podcast host of On Being, has a book titled Becoming Wise that both my mom and I read at the end of this last year. Tippett has a whole section on love and challenges the watered-down version of love that seems to exist in our world today. She asks us instead to consider the possibility of love being the greatest and most transformative force in the world in all of our lives. This seems simple, but I agree with Tippett when she says we haven't quite made it there yet, but we're close, we're so close. I believe the Bible, Jesus, God, ask us to do the same thing with love, to take it seriously and believe in its transformative power. Tippett writes this, the question in and of itself invites us each out of aloneness. The exacting, enlivening aspiration of love does send us inside to know and honor the particularities of our identities and our struggles, but it coaxes us out again to an encounter with the vastness of human identity. If this is what love does, or can do, I think this is also what prayer invites and allows us to do, a push and pull, an in and out. For me, prayer has meant both internal work and external work. It has sounded like, God, I need this, or God, I don't know if I can do this, or God, this sucks, why is this happening? At times, it has even been, God, I really don't like you right now. It has also looked like challenging patterns and privileges at my workplace, cycling in winter, offering my loaf of bread to someone asking for money on the corner of the street, watching the police arrest a young black man outside my home and weeping from inside my window. Prayer, like love, looks first inward. What do I need? How am I feeling? How do I know God today? And what do I have to give to others? 
I think love, prayer, God, truth, they all dance together inside ourselves so we can then give ourselves to the world and to others with our whole selves, not just a part of us. Prayer is a constant looking in and looking out, but I think it might fail us or feel like it does when we don't keep that motion, when we forget that prayer is active, even when it might be introspective at times. If we get stuck on the looking in or even on the looking out, a piece of this greater and transformative love that arises out of prayer is missing. Prayer is a crying out, a keening for lost love, a plea for greater love, and at the end, a song of gratitude when we and others get love right, when we love well. Tippett continues, to insist on faith in the common humanity even of our enemies and live accordingly, to begin with the assumption that love is there and it is up to us to make it real, could we imagine that now? That love is here. It's called God. I believe that the movement of prayer is our tool for accessing deep love through God. Prayer is versatile and adaptive. It bends and breaks and keeps restoring itself, giving us new ways to experience God. It pushes and pulls us so we never forget that our God is an active God. Let's imagine love together. Let us go from here in prayer, committed to imagining and enacting a life of Jesus, which is a life of love.